Hi and welcome back to Computer Science for Everyone. In this video we're going to be creating our lottery class using sets. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new Java project and I'm going to call it lottery. And in it I'm simply going to go to that and create a new class which is going to be the lottery class. And it is going to have a main method because we're gonna this program is basically only going to be this class. So a lottery class has the main method and then we're going to create our other three methods here. Um, this one, as we have seen, in the presentation and this one. We're going to have to import hash set and also we're going to have to import set. Okay, so these are red because we're not returning anything yet. These methods require us to return a hash set. So first of all, let's create the user numbers. So we need to ask the user to select six numbers. And we can do that by um, six numbers separated by spaces. And uh, I'm also going to introduce a new concept, which is the splitting of strings, which is really, really neat concept. So we're going to ask the user to enter six numbers separated by spaces. And then we're going to create our scanner, which we need to import as well. And we're going to scan the six numbers. I'm going to call it numbers raw because it is the string of the numbers. So we have the string here. Okay, so what we want to do now is divide this string into the six numbers. And we, have, and we want them individually. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an array of strings. And we're going to call it numbers split. And this is numbers raw split like so. Let me explain this a bit better. So we're creating a string array which is going to hold a number of strings. We call it numbers split. And this is going to be equal to numbers raw, which is going to be the six numbers separated by spaces. And we're going to split it on the space. So what this is going to give us is six numbers, indi individual numbers, um, where each number is uh, determined by whether there was a space um, in between it and the next number, essentially. So it's basically going to split the string into six in the spaces. Okay, so this is how we get the array of strings. And now we want to create our hash set and then return that. But first, of course, we need to fill the numbers in. So how we're going to do it is instead of creating a set of integers, we're going to directly create a hash set. Because remember I told you we would use set just in case later on we wanted to switch from hash set to something else. Because this variable is inside a method which returns a hash set, we can directly just use hash set because it is unlikely it's going to change. If we wanted, however, to use set, we would need to remove the hash from there as well. Oh, sorry, and this should be integer, not integers. Okay, so we have our user numbers, and this is what we're going to return later on. So how do we put the numbers as integers inside this user numbers um, hash set? Well, the first thing we have to do is go through our loop. If 
you remember the for loop. This is how we iterate through an array, as we saw in section 7. So we have int i equals 0, at least I believe it was section 7. Int i equals 0, which is the beginning of the array. i, which is our index, is going to go from 0 to the length of the array, which is number split. And at the end of each iteration, we're going to increase i by 1, so we move on to the next element of the array. And then, what we're going to do is use the numbers, add number split i. But of course, there is a problem with that. Um, number split i is how we get the index of the array that we're currently looping through. So we're going to, in theory, add every item in this array to user numbers. But user numbers takes integers. This array is of type string. So we need to convert the string to a number. We do that with the integer class, a method called parseInt. So we call parseInt on the array's index, that is a string, and then we get all that and add it into our user numbers, essentially converting the string to a number and then putting it into our hash set. And there we have it. This is how we would get the user numbers. Now, creating the lottery numbers is going to be a bit easier. We create our hash set. And now, create a new for loop. I less than 6 because in theory we're only going to have 6 lottery numbers and here we want to add instead of one of the string values we want to add a random number so how do we create a random number in Java well there is a class called the random class which we need to import and use so here we do uh, lottery numbers add random we're going to need to import it first it's not letting me do it that way so java util random and we're going to get a random number from here So we create the random generator object. Let me explain this a bit better because there was a bit fast, most likely. So we create a random object. This class random is uh, a random generator and lets us generate numbers. So I call it gen and it's new random object. And then this gen has a method called next int and it generates a number between 0 and 49 in this case. If we give it 20, it will be between 0 and 19. So it essentially generates a random number between uh, 0 and the number you give it in the parameter. Okay, so this is that, and then we return the lottery numbers. And there we have our two methods. Finally, we need two compare these two and see um, th the winnings of the user. So we set user numbers to be create user numbers, which then calls this that lets the user input their numbers. And lottery numbers is going to be create lottery numbers, which, as we know, is going to go through here and generate the six numbers and add them to the hash set and then return it, which then gets assigned onto here. And then we do user numbers, retain all, retains only the elements in this collection that are contained in the specified collection. So what we do is we get the user numbers, and we only retain in user numbers those numbers that are in lottery numbers. 
So for example, if the user got three numbers right, user number now would only have three numbers left. Okay, and then we do a set of if statements. Um, if user numbers size equals zero, no money one. And then we copy this one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one ten dollars. I'm not sure if that's a lot, but one hundred dollars. I'm just gonna copy this. Add zeros. Okay. And then we go up to the main method after that is all done and we do compare winning. Compare winnings? Is that what the method's called? Yes. And of course we need to create the lottery object first. I always forget this part. Remember because the methods are not static. Okay. Let's first of all review what the compare winnings is doing one last time. We have the user numbers and the lottery numbers which are created with their respective methods. We call retain all um, in the user numbers so it only keeps the numbers that are both in user numbers and lottery numbers. And then we check if the size is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6 then uh, no money won 10, 100,000, 10,000, 100,000 or a million dollars uh, are won depending on how many the user got right. So, let's try to play and see what happens. Enter six numbers separated by spaces. 15, 2, 6, 25, 3. This is 5, 4. I didn't win anything. It's probably a good idea to display the actual lottery numbers, just so we know um, what actually happened. So, um, Lottery numbers. Is there a way to print this? No, there isn't. Um, to string, now we can print this out. Okay, so this is only going to convert lottery numbers to a string. At least I'm hoping that's what it's going to do, and then print that out. Okay, so there we go. 32, 7, 10, 27, 26, 45, only oh, didn't win anything. But you get the idea. Fifty six is not a number. That is uh, gonna be in there. Twelve, one, a uh, seven and eight. Oh god, I'm not lucky. This is why I don't play the lottery. Anyway, you get the idea. Um if there were any that were matching, then they would be retained in user numbers and therefore its size would be different than zero. Because if user numbers and lottery numbers had two numbers that are the same, i.e. two numbers in user numbers are also in lottery numbers, then the size would be two and we would win a hundred dollars. I understand this is not a very good lottery, but you get the idea. So this is uh, a way to use sets. There are many other uh, situations in which sets are very useful. Um, but hopefully this cleared out any doubts you could have with sets. Um, so in the next one, we're going to be doing binary trees, which is a really useful and really interesting thing uh, in, in programming, a really interesting data structure. So I'll see you in the next presentation.